Hello, wife. Hi, Annie. Today, thanks for joining me and, and to talking talking today about five ways five ways to calculate how much to save for retirement. So everyone loves rules of thumb, right? We love guideposts. How much should I be doing? What you know? What's generally do people do? These are very useful. You know, these are not scientific rules that necessarily apply to us, but it's good to have guideposts. So mm-hmm. here are five easy rules of thumb for calculating how much you need for retirement and. Let's jump right into this. Uh, well, sweetheart, because you're the saver in our family, what did you think of these five rules before we jump into them one by one? Um, I felt like generally they were a bit conservative. I felt like they were all so different, um, so I wasn't sure which one to really base my own savings on. And then I had questions like, what are the assumptions, you know, age of retirement age, life expectancy, there was no context. So I don't know, I was feeling a little bit like it was lacking. Cool. Maybe I can fill in some of those gaps. Let's jump in with the first one. This is an old school rule. And a lot of people don't really follow this one. But the rule is, save 10% of your paycheck. Bing, bang, boom. It's one of the simpler rules. Every paycheck, take 10% and just auto, what do do they call it? Auto direct deposit it into your savings or your 401k or IRA, what have you. So the pros are that it's super easy to remember, super easy to calculate. Uh, the cons are that even though it's really a, a, you know, a simple and easy rule, 10% ain't going to cut it unless you start this sort of immediately upon graduating college and you have all those extra years of compounding. If you start doing this in your 30s or 40s, you're going to be short and you might need to bump that up to 15 or even 20%. Yeah. Uh, yeah what were some I of the agree. questions you had? Yeah. Okay. Very good. <laughs> My biggest question was it 10% pre-tax or post-tax, but because it's um, of your paycheck, I'm just kind of assuming it's your net after all taxes. Yes. Yeah, if, especially if it's auto. Yeah. Um, I agree with you. I think that most 20-year-olds, and I can think back when I was you know, just starting off, I thought, I have so much time. <laughs> I'll just wait. Or And then finally, after waiting, it was kind of like, oh, I'll put in the minimum um, just to get my match on my 401k. Um and I do wish, I think everybody wishes that they saved a little bit more when they were younger. Yeah. If, if they're able to, you know, I mean, the things that I consumed, the ridiculous things that I bought that I thought were important in my 20s, mm, didn't, really, <laughs> didn't really do much for me. So I think 10% is really conservative. Okay. Agree. It does seem, um, you'd need some pretty... Um, pretty steady compounding and maybe have to avoid any major dips for that to to work out and maybe on a, on a podcast on a blog post or something i can work out the math and just show you demonstratively but for now uh, just know that 10 percent might be a little low maybe push that to 15 or 20 especially if you're starting a little later okay mm-hmm. second rule of thumb for how to go about uh figuring out how much to save for retirement 10 times your income okay so this is more about figuring out what is the absolute amount you need in your retirement account on the day you retire right? Okay. And the rule of thumb is 10x your income. So what does that mean, your income? Because your income probably changes throughout your life, right? Uh, I Mm -hmm. think they're kind of assuming either your last income, meaning that your income in your last year of work, or your peak income, because those might not be the same thing, whichever is your highest earning year, right? Right. Yeah, and I've heard somewhere mm -hmm. that um, typically, and I don't know if this is like a legit stat, but I've heard it a few times, that usually people peak in terms of their income level around their, sort of like in their 40s, which seems to make sense if you have a traditional sort of traditional job where you move up and you get promoted and you get raises over time. It seems like in the 40s. So I wonder if we can assume what you're expecting to make at that age, let's say around 40, 45, and then multiply it by 10. Because if I multiply by 10 what I was making right out of college, <laughs> that's not going to help me with my future. Um, so I feel like age is really important. A question. Well, you said the peak earning is in the 40s and 40, mid-40s, but I don't get that. Um, because then what happens? In your 50s, you start getting demoted and making less money? I thought you would... No, I I think the uh, assumption is that you sort of, you you spike in the 40s, you know, if you're moving up, right? Uh You're doing well. And then in your 50s, you sort of plateau. Not that you decline, Uh, but you sort of plateau because you're not 
accelerating as much as it was you're just getting cost of living increases. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, makes sense. So just to give you uh, put some numbers on that, let's say you expect to be earning a hundred thousand dollars in your peak year, whatever. You, and I'm I'm intentionally using round numbers to make the math easier for me because so, we both suck at math. Right. <laughs> so uh, so at a hundred thousand dollars a year, if that's your peak number, and that well, that's what you and your your spouse can comfortably live on, because uh, I'm assuming you're living well on your peak year, right? Then you you're trying to get to a million dollars in your retirement account for, for when you retire. And the, and the uh, assumption here is that with that amount and the earn, interest you're earning on it or, or you know, dividends or what have you that you're earning on it, you're able to live on that while slowly chipping away at the principal between the day you retire and the day you die. So I don't know if there, you know, I haven't d dug into the math of that's, if that's, um, that's going to work out with longer life expectancies, but that is one of the rules of thumb. Mm. Makes sense And so that far? would be assuming yeah. healthy returns on your investment, right? Yeah. Because... I would, I would guess, yeah. Yeah, okay. Okay, the third rule of thumb is called the fidelity rule of thumb, I guess because uh, the financial institution Fidelity popularized this. So it's really similar to the 10x rule we just talked about, but it, it's a little more um, trenched. It's, it has uh, layers based on your age. So this rule of thumb is, is good for, I think you were kind of asking something like this earlier, Hannah, about you know, how, is, how are these amounts different based on age? So the rule is, if you're in your 30s, you should have 1x or 1 times your salary saved up. And in your 40s, you should you know, aspire to have 3 times your salary saved up. By your 50s, 6 times your salary. And by your 60s, 8x. And then by your retirement age, which they assume is 67, it's, you should have 10x your salary saved up. So this is, again, building up to the same 10x rule, but showing you sort of progression-wise where you should be at with each stage of your or a decade of your life. Mhm. Mm this one is this one's hard to remember so I don't like it. <laughs> um <laughs> it's, it is. It's not yeah, as it simple is. as like the 10% or times 10 rule. Yeah. Um Yeah. I, I'm just doing now I'm curious because as you're talking I'm doing my own math on my salary just to see Focus, what that on a podcast. looks like. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but I'm gonna be selfish here and do some math. Hmm, I don't know. Goodness, I can't believe you're it's doing kind of crazy. Plan. Ten, ten times by age sixty-seven. That must then assume that you're making either more money or consuming a lot less. Well, I figure. I mean, Where I know kids, that, people. Yeah. yeah, I know people are having, having kids later, but I mean, once the kids are out your door and you're not supporting them into adulthood like we talked about last time you should have high earning years with lower expenses because the kids are no longer you know yeah. eating out of your house you know i think that's what it is i think it's probably assuming less consumption and so you have more left over to save because i can't imagine that you would exponentially be making more money you know when you're 60 65 versus 50 who knows I'm yeah i mean assuming you've uh, bought a home by then you're no longer saving up for a down payment that's not that's off the table or off the books you know that kind of stuff mm -hmm. yeah okay. okay so the fourth rule of thumb and the next two both have to do with the very popular uh four percent rule Henry, you want to take a stab at explaining the four percent rule before i go into these general rules the way I understand it is that you should have enough saved up that you can withdraw 4% of your um, sort of original or your principal, principal amount mm -hmm. um, each year and live off of that. So if you've got, let's say, a total of a million dollars, you should be able to withdraw 40 k each mm -hmm. year and live off of that without touching the principal. That's the way I've sort of understood it. Very good. Precisely right. And if you want to work that backwards, say your, the lifestyle that you want to achieve is $80,000 a year using the same math backwards. That means you need $2 million in the bank, right? Mm -hmm. so, far, right. so far and so forth. Okay. So it's working backwards from um, instead of figuring out the, the aggregate amount in savings that you want, you start by figuring out what you want to live on and work backwards. What, as, um, what amount is that 4% of? <laughs> um, and that's how you figure mm -hmm. out what, um, what the amount you need in savings. Okay, so that's the 4% rule. Uh, so one of, the, one of the rules of thumb for how much you should save to retire is applying the 4% rule to 80% of your income. Okay? So what that means is you take 80% of your income, right, and f uh, figure, can I live on... Uh, hold on a second. Theoretically, it is... 
Actually, I'm a so little tripped up on this. So would it be withdrawing four yeah. percent from eight hundred k versus four percent from a million? Oh, I know. I get. It. So this this rule is saying to get to the four percent rule percent rule, figure out can you live on eighty percent of your current income, and then apply the four four percent rule to. Oh. Okay. I sorry see. if I. So about Assuming the you'll have less expenses when you retire. Exactly. So let's say you, oh. know, you and I are living on 100k a year now, but you know we're supporting the kids and we have a lot of expenses going out. So instead of doing a multiplier on on 80 or 100k, we're going to assume we can get by comfortably on 80k a year, and then apply the four percent rule to that, which is what was it, two million? You're asking me. <laughs> Yes, yes. So that, that's how we get to the amount that we need in savings. We need uh, two million. Wow, saying that makes it sound daunting. But yeah, two million in savings by the time uh, we retire. Everyone follow that? Okay. Okay. Uh, the, ne <laughs> the next application and the final rule of using the 4% rule is, is kind of the exact same thing, but instead of using the 4% rule on this sort of 80% of your current salary, just figure out what you think you want to live on by the time you retire and then use the 4% rule on that. So if you and I want to go minimal, super, super frugal, minimalist, anti-meat, you know, no house, tiny house living and have, I don't know, 20K in, um, in living expenses in our retirement and we, we, we think, we decide we can comfortably live on that, then using the 4% rule going backwards, 20K is 4% of uh, 500,000. So that's the amount we need to have in retirement, 500,000, to be able to do our tiny living retirement. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. I think that one's the trickiest, though, that rule, because you have to guess, basically. Yeah. Hmm, how long do I think I'll live? Hmm, how, um, how strong of a return do you think I'll get on my investments? Uh, hmm, what about inflation? It's like, how do we know? <laughs> how do we know these things? I feel like working backwards is so tricky. I, I think I, I generally take the approach of, you know, save as much as you can. Enjoy your life, obviously. Enjoy your life. Um, but if you have surplus, and I mean surplus in the me in in the context of like, not I don't know. I think people buy a lot of stuff. I buy a lot of stuff, but there are people who buy a lot of stuff, like a lot. I mean, I can I know that I'm conscious, but I can still cut down a lot. And I see all these TV shows of people who are struggling, and it's really sad. And you go into their homes; they're about to lose their homes. Their homes are stuffed with things, just like tchotchkes they've they've collected over the years and you know six full walk-in closets full of clothes and accessories and you just, like you 70. Just, you just, they don't need this stuff you just have walk-in closet envy <laughs> i do I, I just want one i have total envy i just want one though I, I want all closet i'd like a nice like one closet living in the city but no seriously i think that if you just adjust your belief in terms of like what what do you really need to enjoy your life and what do you really you know of course there are sort of like i mean i like bags and shoes and you know that so i'm not gonna be on my high horse here but just a little bit of refrain and i don't know i think there's fun in saving like i don't think it's a punishment to save you know i think if you can find a joy in putting money aside and seeing it grow and you know that's me maybe i'm a little cuckoo but i like that like i I really enjoy increasing my savings percentage. I like seeing the returns. I like knowing that I've had the self-control not to touch it. Um, you sound like um, you might also me. enjoy. <laughs> you sound like you might also enjoy um, converting your savings into coins and putting them in a vault and like swimming in it. Have you ever tried that? No. <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm not Scrooge. I definitely <laughs> buy stuff, and I, you know, I buy s stupid things and. You know, but like little things, you know how lately I've been trying to take the kids to the library more because I don't want to buy so many books that just sit around and collect dust after they read them once. Yeah. So things like that. I mean, I calculated one day I sat around calculating how much I spent annually on books. And I thought, okay, I'm going to eliminate this line item from my budget because you can enjoy books plenty without necessarily collecting them. So just, I don't know, things like that. Without judgment, obviously, I am not... I have a lot of work to do myself on how I spend my money. But I just think that if consumption goes down, then you don't have to fret so much about not being prepared when you're older. So coming soon, obviously, is Hannah's podcast on minimalist living and frugality. <laughs> so just kidding. <laughs> oh, my, my soapbox. Um, my soapbox. <laughs> no, but that, that's totally true. I mean, uh, figuring out what that 4% should apply to, that, that's a huge part of it. And it's a huge variable. So I like, I, I like what you said before that. It's, it makes that one one of the tougher ones to, 
to guess at because you are just guessing in many ways, right? I mean, if you had yeah. done the 4% rule um, 20 years ago, you wouldn't have factored in cell phone bill into your expenses, right? You wouldn't, that wouldn't have existed. <laughs> right, so, right. So you just don't know. <laughs> and I, I mean, you and I, we had no idea how much kids would cost. Yeah, yeah. No idea. Yeah. Um, and actually, it's, you know, it's scary because I feel like there's no end to it. But yeah, that's why I think just a little bit of self-control here and there, not to um, sort of like punish yourself or hold back so much that you can't enjoy your life. But we live in America and for the vast majority of us and probably a lot of people who are listening to this podcast are doing okay and hopefully are healthy and are able-bodied and have good educations. So we can probably do with a lot less than what we have sitting in our homes, cluttering our space. That's it. That's it? You're good? <laughs> <laughs> I'm good for now. All right, cool. So hopefully um, I did an okay, we did an okay job explaining those five ways, just rules of thumbs. These are not you know, rocket sci- or hard science, ways of calculating how much you should be saving for retirement. Thanks for listening. Thank you, wife. And we'll talk to you next time. Bye. Bye now.